the main idea of our project was to develop a different system for detecting damages on large energy infrastructure and later on if this succeeds to expand it for other different types of large infrastructure so basically this was our title of the project structural damage detection on power plants using drone based inspection and automated analysis so the main uh, work that we did we developed and tested a unified deep learning model that works on these inspection images, basically optical images. And we also tested on thermal images. And the main idea was to have one single model that can work on both these uh, thermal images and optical images. And also, even if the inspections were covering drone, like drone images of wind turbines or uh, solar panels, it should be able to detect the damages because some of the damages have a very uh, unique traits and it's common. So this this was the main hypothesis that we tested and we got some good results out of it. We also, uh, throughout this process, collected some data and also we have some of our own data and then together we made a data set that we published in Dataverse. And we also disseminated our results to publications, participated in different competitions and workshops. And also, we are now trying to extend our work uh, so that we can apply it on other like uh, normal structure like bridges and buildings. So we are now uh, exploring that area. And also, we would like to develop a system that can not only detect the damages, but also measure the CVIT and kind of become like a standalone application system that where we can feed the images and we get kind of a report out of it. So that systems we would like to develop and we're working towards it. Now, this was the, when we made the presentation at the, at the beginning and we promised that we were gonna publish a data set, we will participate in the GEX 2021. Also later on as we were selected, uh, to be participated in recess. So we participated in that. Then we published our work in energy report, which has impact factor of 6.87. And also we duly uh, mentioned the contribution of the CRIT in our publications and all this uh, competitions that we participated. Here is uh, like just a snapshot of our paper. And now I'm gonna actually show uh, a little bit more details into the work, what we have done, what, are, what types of results we have uh, achieved and how we're gonna move forward from there. So the main problem that we tried to address was to detect damages that looks quite different depending on at which part of the wind turbine blade we are looking at, or even if we are looking at, uh, for example, in PV modules, they look different. They are not exactly damages, but something that hinders the production of energy, but also this could be analyzed with thermal images like this. This is uh, taken from uh, with the infrared camera, and this can have a very different traits. And this is also in a very uh, like a sharp angle where only the drones can reach and take pictures from there. So all of this, though they are uh, quite different modalities and, and have presents the special relationship of the damage in a different way but the damages that are kind of unique, a model we thought would should be given enough examples should be able to learn about them. So with that, we tried with uh, we we tried to create a unique model. So what we did, we tested with different state of the art algorithms that are used normally for damage detections, but then we tried to train them with our own data sets. Uh, and 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 see how they perform, and then try to find which uh, which types of architectures is more adaptable for images of uh, these kinds. Then we try to make some comparative study and experimental uh, analysis of all the available models of different versions of YOLO and efficient that uh, which are the state of the art object detection model. Then we tested on some real unseen damages that we we kept separate just to see how they perform and, and can they be used for uh, like uh, real life applications and also create a data set and that we'd like to build on for our research community. 
Here is, an, uh, is a just a summary of the data set that we used. So this wind turbine optical images, this was where back when I was used to work in Denmark, we collaborated with a company called Easy Inspect, and they used to do a drone inspections of different uh, like uh, wind turbines. And I had the option to use some of the data sets from, which was taken at the D2 wind of a wind turbine that that lab had. And so those uh, drone inspection images we used. Then we had solar panel optical images, which was taken from a published paper and they had given the permission to use them. Then we have uh, taken some of the images of our own, of uh, some of the uh, solar panels that we had on the rooftop in our own uh, buildings. So we, we took them and also we uh, collected solar panel infrared images from another published paper, which is referred here. And then uh, these are the different types of models that we tried. So basically, uh, YOLO is pretty fast, quite efficient, but uh, we wanted to see how the performance increases, but also in terms of the complexity. Because what happens in, in deep learning is we, maybe we can generate a very, uh, we can uh, deploy a very deep model, but maybe the gain in performance is not as much compared to the complexity or the number of parameters or the number of ways that it needs to optimize. Because we are considering we have uh, like a limited data set. So if our model is too, too large, it might not, might not have enough training samples to optimize. So we, we tried to see how this relationship plays out. So we took this uh, data sets and we, tra we train YOLO version 3, version 4, version 5, and also did the same for efficient D, uh, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. These are uh, efficient, that is another uh, generation of uh, optic detection uh, models, uh, and it's, uh, it's published by Google uh, research team, but they are uh, quite light and could be efficient as well. So if you look at this particular table, you can see that the YOLO version 5 that, that give, gave us the, the best results, but the complexity since YOLO version 3, version 5, it, it really, the number of parameters goes quite high. And the same is we, we, if we look at the number of props that needs to train these types of model, we can see YOLO version 5, though it gives a, quite a high results and efficient it. Uh, this one also gets complex, but it's not really giving us a very good results. So these uh, types of figure we generated just to see why when we deploy a model for a real application, maybe we can find kind of a right balance. So for example, the efficient one, or if this one, we can see that even if it's very, very light, it actually works quite well. And the reason behind is because on our data set is quite small. So maybe for the smaller data set, it, it's, uh, it finds its, uh, its uh, optimum position faster and kind of gives a kind of a robust results and which is reliable enough. But maybe with this uh, efficient debt or efficient uh, like debt version two, version three, we can have that and maybe add on to some other uh, types of features that can help this particular model having it light, but then extend its um, its performance in terms of the accuracy in object detection. And the same thing, actually, we we have this uh, experiment done on all the damages separately. For example, when we looked at the wind damages, or only solar, when when what happens with when we mix solar images with uh, infrared solar images or solar uh, infrared images, smaller and larger solar scale. What happened when we mixed with uh, these large wind turbine data sets and the solar images together, and then what happened with wind, small, large uh, solar images, and also infrared images. So what we have seen, this, the last one is the most complex one because it, uh, it covered all four modality. And in this case, which was kind of the, our primary goal uh, or primary research question to explore, Yolo version five, which performed really well. 
but then uh, I, we can see this YOLO generation, they are really able uh, to perform better when we compare with, um, with uh, like a different sense of data and different scales. So all these results, we, we actually kind of summarize and we get the insights for, for our publication. And, and I think we, we got uh, what was our, the main finding was that we know that this, this actually can work. And the, the advantage of this thing is because in normal practices, we actually train models for different types of data sets all the time. But what if we now, with the modern technology, we can actually create one model that actually has all this information, like uh, like we human, we are, because we learn uh, so many things, but it's our one brain that learns all the things. So rather than training a different models for all different applications, when we have common uh, things to share, maybe we can train one model and, and just generate the right data set so that it can, and have the right variability so that it can be quite robust. So that's the uh, that's thing is, I think it's very, very, um, potential, but still a lot of scope for improvement and we need to explore further for creating a more reliable application and the final reporting system. And that was uh, it. And this is kind of just a summary of what I said. So we, we, we have these drones, we make these images and this is where these training steps where we worked and in the future, we, we want to work on creating this severity reporting based on the location of the damages and also improve our performance and also feed into different other sense of data and create a more uh, data fusion based approach and also generate a suggestion system. So it's not only a reporting that this is the condition or the health condition of the blade or any other infrastructure, it should be able with be able to say, now you need to repair or you need to repair these types of damage or this particular damage in six months, comparing the cost, uh, the time it takes, comparing the severity of the damages and things like this. So we, we are here and we really want to thank uh, our Crete Green University of Bangladesh for giving us this funding and, and this space and opportunity to actually investigate into this and hopefully from here we might create some uh, some kind of avenue that can actually generate our local expertise in Bangladesh for doing this kind of uh, surveillance or uh, health monitoring and create a great value to our economy and our industry and and create uh, this local know-how that could be even in the future exported in in other countries as well.